What is up, guys? Welcome for our Season 8 of the NPL Majors Draft Analysis for your Montreal Habsols. If you guys didn't know, the uh, draft stream went down, I believe it was last week. And uh, I'm putting up my draft anal analysis today. Hopefully it gets out on Saturday. Hopefully I can get it out in time. Uh, but um, we, uh, we did draft for the NPL, uh, as you guys know, and I'm going to be o going over my draft. Our battle uh, for week one actually goes out tomorrow. Uh, supposed to be on Saturdays normally, but uh, we do we did have uh, March Madness today. So uh, there is that that kind of got in the way, kind of conflicted with uh, with our upload. But uh, it will be coming out tomorrow. We play the FC Pop Leo week one. Just wanted to mention that right away, but I'm going to get right into the draft analysis. So uh, first, a little bit of backstory. Uh, the way that the draft order worked was that the champion, uh, being Gypsy from last season, got first choice at which p position of pick that he wanted, uh, and Gypsy picked to go first. And then was me, uh, and I got to choose my draft position, and I didn't want to be second. Uh, I wanted to be third because I didn't want to miss out on almost every and all and every pick uh, coming back on the wheel essentially and I knew what mons I wanted and which ones I was looking at and there were three in particular so I knew that as long as all three didn't uh or like uh, I would always get one of the three no matter what because this person in second and first couldn't grab all three immediately obviously so uh the mon I was looking at the most though was of course uh if you guys saw the draft stream Tapu Koko uh I've been wanting to use this mon in a serious league for a while now I had it in the NBA but nobody ever got to see that uh except for a select few people so and I really really liked it there uh I loved the fact that it's so fast so versatile as well uh it's typing is incredible being fairy and uh an electric only having two weaknesses being poison and, uh, and ground uh really uh with with a bunch of resistances as well things like flying and fighting uh make it an excellent mon uh, i i absolutely love this thing uh its ability to run physical or special sets uh with uh, dual momentum in volt switch and u-turn you guys know how much i love the ability to to gain momentum on any mon uh not have any immunity in your way uh such as ground types for electrics so that's really really nice mons like jolteon and uh with a baton pass and zapdos and the thundies really excel at that uh and tapu koko being the fastest among all of them speed tying with Jolteon while having a little bit more power because of its ability in electric terrain uh, is really really cool. Uh, the fact that uh, nothing can go to sleep uh, is really nice because um, the, you'll see on my team that I have a lot of fast taunt and uh, the fact that I have taunt means that things can't just recover in front of me uh, nor can they rest. Uh, because of the uh, the terrain, so I'm really able to capitalize on ones that want to recover. Uh, as long as I'm applying a lot of offensive pressure on teams, I should be good to go. So uh, as long as nothing's off the ground, of course, then it's uh, obviously not affected by my uh, my electric terrain. But otherwise, uh, this thing is an absolute monster. So uh, that was the first one that I decided to go with. Now uh, I got sniped a lot this draft. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, I got slapped, uh, sniped uh, nine times total. Uh, throughout the draft as I c continue to adjust, adjust my draft plan based on each and every snipe uh, and then I just kept getting sniped over and over and over again. I think I got sniped twice in one round and every other time was a singular one per round but e each and every one made a difference and the first one was that I wanted Zardex. Zardex is a breaker in uh, in tandem with uh, Tapu Koko is really really nice and then I would have gotten a strong water like Keldeo uh, to, uh, to take advantage of grounds that like to come in on uh, on top of Coco. The two biggest uh, typings that come in on top of Coco the most are grass and ground, uh, and that being the case, <coughs> excuse me, Zardex and Keldeo can really, really take advantage of those mons. Uh, some steals even like coming in on uh, on Coco, uh, and both Keldeo and Zard can take advantage of those. So uh, that was uh, something that I had in mind. But unfortunately, Zardex was taken by our good pal, Regulator60. So uh, I was uh, I was forced to re uh, rethink things. And uh, I was in uh, I was in conversations. <coughs> wow, I need some water. I was in conversations with Anthony Zazo, Iron Flash Gaming, and uh, he uh, he told me uh, get get a breaker. Uh, try to get a breaker that um, that can gain you momentum as well. Uh, and I was looking, and uh, he suggested Diggersby, and I really like Diggersby, so I ended up getting it uh, round two. And this core is really, really nice because uh, Coco gains momentum into Diggersby and Diggersby breaks the walls uh, that Coco doesn't like dealing with. Uh, grounds typically don't have a way, unless they're grounds and waters, uh, typically don't have a way to really um, de destroy uh, Diggersby necessarily on the first turn, but Diggersby pretty much always 2 KOs whatever it wants. So uh, really based on the item that you're running, of course. But uh, Diggersby has great scarfing speed, <coughs> excuse me, great uh, banded speed, 
as well. Uh, the, the huge power ability is absolutely incredible. Uh, strong stabs on both sides uh, being returned, even things like facade. And uh, quick attack for priority is always really, really nice on a team uh, because it's one of the most unresisted um, priorities uh, in the game. Uh, being only Steel Rock and of course Ghost having the immunity and Steel and Rock types don't like dealing with Diggersby in the first place because of its ground typing, so there is that. Uh, and Diggersby being a, moment a momentum mon as well with U-turn is going to be really, really nice. The ability to scarf it as I said earlier. Uh, I think I I've used this mon once. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, my throat is killing me. <coughs> Alright, we're back. Um, Diggersby I've used once before. It was in the GOT and I really, really liked it. Uh, I didn't get to use it enough, unfortunately. It was a really short tournament for me, and I, uh, I ended up uh, being knocked out in the first round of, uh, of Bracket, so uh, there was that. But I, I really wanted to try it again, Zazo suggested, and, and I, uh, I, I took it immediately. A lot of people questioned as to why I grabbed it round two. It's going to make even less sense once you see my round three pick, but uh, I really wanted this breaker early, and I didn't want it to go in, uh, in round four, so I needed to grab it either second or third pick, and I wasn't sure what I wanted for my third pick yet. Uh, but ultimately, I decided on a Mon that's uh, very much slept on. <coughs> in draft league format right now because it hasn't been uh, it hasn't shown through and uh, I have a knack for showing how good dragons are uh, in uh, in league format once I get my hands on them uh, Flygon uh, specifically as well as Zygarde um, are things that I've uh, I've really brought into into the light uh, Flygon specifically with my sweep in miners and uh, Zygarde with my amazing season in GPC season 6 and uh, this time I decided to grab Como now, Como, uh, of course, having that four times weakness. <coughs> wow. I hate that I can't pause this because uh, I'm doing this on OBS. And you guys have to keep hearing me cough. I should really mute it when I do cough, but I don't want those pauses. I'd rather you know that I'm still here. Um, Como, having that four times weakness is not a huge deal because uh, Hidden Power Fairy doesn't exist. You really have to rely on things like Dazzling Gleam uh, and Moonblast as coverage uh, if it's a Mon that typically can't hit uh, Como super effectively. Uh, speed stat, very nice, uh, able to, uh, to Dragon Dance past a lot of things, uh, including, I believe, Mega Arrow, Mega, uh, Alakazam, if I'm not mistaken, thanks to the base 85 speed, um, I might be wrong on that, I think it can, it can get it can definitely get past Sceptile and, uh, and Mega Beedrill, so with one Dragon Dance it can outspeed the entire metagame, uh, almost, and, um, the fact that I have one of the two base 150s as well, as you guys are gonna see on the next pick, um, Makes this thing really nice for Dragon Dancing. It also has Autotomize. It also has um, great stats overall. Like, its bulk is really, really good. Uh, I'm pulling it up for you as we speak so I can get the exact amounts. But it's uh, 75 HP, not amazing, but base 125 defense and base 105 speed F make it really, really bulky. Uh, I'm playing David tomorrow, and he has a Mega Kang, and uh, by now we've already played, as you guys have figured out. Uh, Como is going to be my check to that, so you guys are going to see that in the video tomorrow, but uh, physically defensive Como can actually take on Kang surprisingly well. Uh, and being able to run mixed sets with uh, with physical attack, special attack, uh, base attack of 110, base special attack of 100, and as I mentioned before, the 85 speed is also really, really nice. So a uh, plethora of items that you can run on this thing, berries and uh, like Roselli Berry, for example, allows it to take hits from certain mons uh, that aren't too strong with their fairy stab. Uh, for example, if I bring up Clefable, I'll show you guys the calc. Uh, well, I won't show it on screen, but Clefable's Moonblast to a Roselli, no, uh, no uh, speed F, no HP, nothing on Como does 64 to 70, uh, 76. So it doesn't knock it out. It's a four times effective move that just doesn't come close to knocking it out. Uh, crit would do it, obviously, but uh, we're not talking about crits. But Como, very versatile on its coverage is fantastic. It also gets access to stealth rocks this, uh, well, in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So uh, this is my first rocker on the team. And uh, my next rocker on the team that I decided to get was, uh, and this was a suggestion from Johnny Ricepool, my good friend. Um, he's like, look, Coco is going to force a lot of choice scarfers because its speed is so damn high. What you're going to want to do is pair it with a Mon that also for forces other choice scarfers that don't have the same super effective coverage that they do on uh, on Co on uh, Coco. Uh, did I say Como before? I meant Coco. Coco forces Scarfs. Uh, so this Mon as well, Mega Aerodactyl, base 150 speed, also forces Choice Scarfs. Uh, if you notice, uh, Coco's weaknesses are Poison and Ground, and Arrow resists both. So uh, that's going to be a very nice uh, speed combination between the two. Uh, Arrow is a very, very nice Mon in Draft League format because there's only one Mon that speed ties with it, and, and that's Mega Alakazam. If I don't run into Mega Alakazam, or if it goes undrafted, which I think it actually might have, uh, if I go and check the uh, the draft board, 
uh, Mega Alakazam. It did go undrafted, which means I have the fastest Pokemon on my team uh, across the entire NPL right now. So, um... Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's pretty solid, considering that I never, ever, ever once have to run max speed on my, uh, my Mega Arrow. I don't even have to come close to running max speed, honestly. Uh, in fact, unless I'm going up against Mega Lopunny or Mega Manectric, I don't ever have to go Jolly either, I believe. Uh, Mega B, obviously, but I resist, uh, both stabs, so that's not a problem. And then Mega Sceptile, but I have other checks to that, so I don't think I would ever run max speed anyway. Uh, but that's besides the point. Uh, Mega Arrow is really, really fat, too. Uh, if you look at its stats, 80 HP, uh, 85 defense, and 95 speed F might not seem like a lot, but when you never have to run max speed, uh, you get a lot of bulk in return. And uh, Mega Arrow can live hits like, I believe, Banded Bullet Punch from Scizor, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if it invested correctly. So, like, things like that, like super effective hits that you would think would kill uh, from full. <coughs> and Mega Arrow just takes them like they're nothing. Uh, great coverage uh, ability uh, with Tough Claws, uh, boosting the Fangs, uh, Thunder Fang, Fire Fang, all of those. Uh, very, very nice. Stone Edge, Earthquake, uh, Aerial Ace, uh, also boosted. Uh, access to Stealth Rocks is my second Stealth Rocker. Access to Defog, my second Defogger. So, I have a Defogger off the ground, which I really like. Um, being able to get rid of Spikes and Toxic Spikes. Uh, obviously, Hazard Removal, not super important, I would say. If your opponent intends to Hazard stack you, they're wasting as much time getting up the Hazards as you waste getting rid of them. So... At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You're, you're going to try to capitalize on them getting up hazards in the first place. So uh, that's Mega Arrow. Access to Roost, obviously. A lot of uh, really, really solid coverage. Uh, even on the special side, it's only got base uh, 70 special attack, but it gets uh, access to, I believe, uh, things like Flamethrower and whatnot. I could be wrong about that, but uh, Mega Aerodactyl. Like, if you want to run a, a special uh, move, yeah, like Fire Blast and Flamethrower, exactly. Uh, and Hidden Powers and stuff. That's always an option. Uh, Hidden Power Ice could always be interesting. So... <laughs> that's uh, that's arrow another fast taunter too. That's something that I wanted to mention is that I have a lot of uh, really good taunt on my team between Coco uh, Como I believe gets taunt uh, if I'm not mistaken Taunt yes, it does uh, with a base 85 speed and now I have a base 150 speed with uh, with taunt as well So this is a uh, very very nice moving on uh, what I wanted next was I'm on uh, <coughs> Once again with momentum into my faster stuff into my breakers um, but that could really fill any role that I needed from week to week, and it's a, t a tough one to find. Uh, so I decided to grab Silvali, and Silvali is 11 points, deservedly so, I believe. Um, it's a tier 4 in the, uh, in the GBA, which is actually quite surprising, because this thing is, it, well, I mean, I don't think it merits being a tier 3, but it, there should be like a mid-range between tier 3 and tier 4, honestly, because Silvali would be right in the middle. Uh, Silvali's really, really good. Base 95s across... Uh, making it extremely bulky if need be, uh, powerful if it needs to be as well, multi-attack uh, based on its typing. Uh, the only issue is that unless you run normal, it struggles running items, obviously, because it needs to run its uh, its memories. And uh, But its coverage is fantastic. It gets access to things like uh, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Flamethrower, uh, Dark Moves. Uh, let me bring up Silvali. I know it gets Pursuit. Um, that's a great Pursuit Trapper. Uh, just like Arrow, actually. Arrow gets a great pursuit as well. Uh, this is another Defogger, so now I have three. Um, it gets, uh, access to Flame Charge is an interesting set. Uh, Heat Wave on the Fire, as well as, uh, Flamethrower, as we mentioned. Uh, Iron Head for a Seal Move. Uh, Parting Shot is the big one, though. Parting Shot and U-Turn are things that it gets access to. Both of those, actually. Alright, that time I had to cough, like, for real, for real. So, yeah, um... Yeah, things like, um, you know, it gets phasing with Roar, Shadow Ball, Shadow Claw, it's a, a Tailwind, its coverage is great, X Scissor, uh, Zen Headbutt, uh, really you can run a Thunderbolt, you can really run uh, any uh, any typing on this thing, Al almost any typing, very, very efficiently, uh, and um, like some of the dark moves it gets are fantastic, Pursuit, Punishment, uh, I just really, really like this, so I don't necessarily need a dark, I end up picking up a dark, and I believe it's my next pick. Uh, but I really like this thing because it can fill in uh, for any typing that I end up missing by the end of the draft And there's actually one very crucial one uh, that you guys are gonna see Once we get to the end and I'll, I'll mention it again. I, ho I hope I don't forget but uh, so Wally pretty much uh, fills in uh, Whatever role I need it for from week to week. Uh, I won't be coming every week But the, the weeks that it does it's gonna be a little bit of a, a surprise and a, kind of a, a surprise factor kind of like a Zoroark uh, every uh, every week uh, for every team so 
That's gonna be nice. Uh, moving on, we have, uh, like I said, our dark type. I decided to get Sneasel. Uh, nice mid-range speed, speed tier uh, that I knew I was gonna be missing 115. Very nice. Uh, great Pursuit Trapper. That's gonna make it a lot easier for me to deal with bulky psychics. Uh, strong knockoff user. Uh, Ice Shard priority is always invaluable in uh, in a draft league format because of all of the uh, the setup dragons. Uh, I have probably the only one on my team that doesn't really care too much about Ice Shard. Uh, but you have things like Garchomp with Swords Dance and Salamence, Zygarde, uh, the, and Lando T, not even a dragon, but uh, just a, a dual dance mon uh, that's quad weak to ice. Uh, I have the only one that's really threatening and that isn't super weak to ice. It isn't four times weak to ice, uh, being Como. There are there obviously are a few others that I'm, uh, I'm not thinking of right now, but uh, Sneasel covers the ones that I'm really, really scared of because I know I'm going to be super weak to them uh, if I keep my team this way. So uh, Sneasel really... Uh, checks a lot of those mons. Uh, Lando Eye is allowed as well, uh, and I believe it is... Is it Sheer Force? Uh, I believe it's Sand Force. I could be wrong, but uh, let me check. Lando Eye. Where is Lando? Uh, I know I know Danza has it, and it's 18 points, so it has to be Sheer Force, right? 18 points? Yeah, it's Sheer Force. Uh, so that's, an that's another extremely threatening mon. You look at my team, and not a lot likes dealing with Lando Eye, so... Obviously, I can try to switch in. Um, I can try to switch an arrow, but if a rock slide comes out, that's always a threat. So, getting momentum on the Lando Eye into Sneasel, very nice. Uh, if I end up playing Dan's, I haven't even seen my schedule, but uh, obviously, this is uh, kind of an obvious bring uh, against him. I may or may not bring it though. You never know. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's Sneasel for you. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward mon. It's here to to revenge uh, quite a, more more often than not. Uh, can also run Swords Dance, it's got uh, setup. Pretty much all of my mons at this point have some sort of setup. Uh, we've got uh, Calm Mind, Coco, uh, Swords Dance, Diggersby, Autotomize, or Dragon Dance, Como, uh, Hone Claws on um, on Mega Arrow, and then I have Swords Dance on both Silvali and Sneasel. So, uh, Silvali and Sneasel are kind of similar mons in that regard, but I needed something with Ice Shard, and I, I wasn't looking into uh, Pillow Swine or anything like that uh, at that time. So I was going uh, for a lower point mon because I needed... Uh, I needed a good diversity uh, pool in my team as well, so that's Sneasel for you. Moving on, uh, next mod I decided to get, because uh, I was looking, um, and Johnny agreed, uh, Johnny was the one that brought it up actually, I was looking very weak to uh, special attack spam, like people could throw out like psychics and focus blasts on my team and I would be very, very uh, vulnerable to that, so he's like, look, get, <coughs> excuse me, get something that can tank special hits, and that's exactly what I did. I got... Meloetta! And uh, Meloetta is something that I feel pairs very nicely with Tapu Koko because a lot of uh, bulkier mons want to come in on it, uh, things with high special defense, and Meloetta kind of takes advantage of them because it itself has very, very high special defense and high special attack, not to mention it can switch into pirouette form at any time, and pirouette is very, very threatening. Uh, I lost to pirouette in, uh, in GBAD League Week 9, uh, and that thing just ran through me. It's extremely fast as well. Uh, it's got... Uh, it goes to 130 base speed as well, I think. So that's uh, that's another speed tier filled if ever I need it. But mainly, this is uh, kind of my special wall. Uh, it doesn't have any kind of recovery, but what it does have is uh, actually I won't reveal that. Um, it does uh, it does have an interesting move that it can run uh, uh, as far as recovery goes. But uh, yeah, Meloetta, very cool mon. Uh, Serene Grace is, an, is always an interesting ability uh, to have. It's not the best Serene Grace user, obviously, the Togekiss and Drachi, uh, far outclassing it. But I feel like as far as a uh, specially defensive wall, uh, being that I already have a fairy and I didn't want to get Togekiss, because uh, that would do be doubling up on quite a few typings, uh, I decided to get Meloetta. Uh, another normal type, but... It's, uh, it's a normal type that's not weak to fighting. It actually takes fighting neutrally, so that's uh, that's really nice. And uh, ghost moves do not work on this psychic type, so uh, that's quite nice. I now have a dark type uh, that can kind of switch in on, on some ghosts, and I also have a psychic type that can switch in on ghosts, which not a lot of people can say. So uh, Meloetta, very nice mon, also gets access to U-turn, so that's another uh, momentum for me. I do have now, now Coco, uh, Diggersby, Silvali, and uh, Meloetta that all get forms of momentum. And the next mon I decide to pick up is kind of the same thing, is Uh So you might be asking, why did you get Uxi plus Meloetta? Well, Meloetta is not really a fighting check, that's that's the issue. Meloetta can't switch in on fighting moves uh, too often. Uxi can, 
uh, realistically. It doesn't really care too much about things like close combat and focus blast because it is pure psych. Yeah, you know, its its bulk is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, there are multiple ways to run UFC. You can run it Calm Mind. Uh, the fact that I can rest with it e even under um, electric terrain was something that was really appealing to me uh, due to the fact that it's uh, off the ground. So like Calm Mind rest is always an option. It's always on the table. Um, stealth Rocker. Uh, so this is my third Stealth Rocker now. I think I end up getting uh, one more. Yes, my next pick is another Stealth Rocker. So, uh, you can see, uh, amazing Stealth Rocker, amazing lead. Uh, Trick Room is always an option, especially with something uh, with Diggersby, which is in the mid-range speeds. Um, Trick Room is something that can really catch my opponents off guard. For example, I, if I use Trick Room to counter Tailwind, that's uh, that's pretty sick. Uh, so, that's always uh, in, the, uh, in the playbook. Uh, we've got Rocks, we've got U-Turn, we've got Foul Play, we've got uh, Psychic. Uh, we've got uh, other little tech-ons like uh, Fire Punch and, and uh, Ice Punch and stuff like that. So, you can see it's, uh, it's kind of just a wall. It's kind of just there to, to sit there, but it also gains momentum. Uh, and slow U-turn is always really, really nice uh, for a team, I feel. Having something that can slow U-turn and slow Volt Switch, which is actually the next thing that I end up picking up uh, on the team, is uh, is really, really good into, my, into some of my breakers, uh, like Diggersby, like uh, Tapu Koko. Because Tapu Koko itself is a breaker, so I couldn't rely on it just for momentum. Uh, as good as it is uh, as it is with Volt Switch and U-Turn, uh, I've had the experience in the past knowing that uh, fast electrics are good at just staying in and attacking, uh, rather than wanting to always get out. So uh, something with a slower Volt Switch, especially under electric terrain, is really, really nice. Uh, and that's why I ended up getting uh, Fortress next. And Fortress uh, is, of course, a hazard stacker for me. It's uh, it's my spiker alongside of Diggersby. It's also my toxic spiker, uh, mainly a toxic spiker, realistically. Uh, access to rocks, so now I have four rockers. I think that's enough. Uh, rapid spin is going to be really nice for Mega Arrow, for Sneasel and whatnot. Uh, access to Volt Switch, Explosion, um, Bug Bite, Gyro Ball, all of these, uh, these little things that uh, Fortress does really, really well. Obviously, it's got that four times fire weakness. If you guys are uh, noticing, my team is looking a little bit fire weak, uh, and it just continues to get more and more fire weak. Had to cough again. Um, more and more fire weak, but realistically, the issue is that I have Mega Arrow, and I have Como. And both of those, like, if you lock yourself into a fire move, and one of those two comes out, that's very, very scary. So I, I'm kind of taking advantage of that. I'm going to spoil it right away. The, the typing that I end up neglecting to get is water. Uh, and that's kind of why uh, I, I had Silvali, so I was like, you know what, if ever I need to run Silvali water realistically, there aren't too many water types that get recovery, like Suicune and, uh, and Milotic, for example, Gastrodon. It's very, very limited, and there were none of those that uh, either I was looking at or that were available at the time. So I was like, you know what, let's, uh, let's go with Fori. Uh, and let's use Silvali as our uh, as our water type if need be, uh, and I can always create alternate checks to fires elsewhere. If it's a special fire, I can always use Meloetta. If it's a physical fire, I can always use Arrow. So like things like that, you know. Uh, so Fortress is mainly going to be uh, I guess a lead mon. Uh, it's going to be very good at, uh, at just spike stacking and uh, and getting out whenever it needs to. Um, I guess ground type hazard removers are the biggest issue. Things like Bliscor and the Landos, uh, Flygon, for example, are going to be uh, a little bit of a nuisance to uh, to Fortress. So those are things that I'm going to have to watch out for. Uh, but other than that, uh, there's not too much that's dealing with Fori. So um, as far as its hazard stack goes, so that's uh, that's a big one. I really, really like this thing, uh, and I've used it uh, quite effectively. Uh, actually, this is going out before then. Okay, never mind. Uh, so. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Fortress for you. Uh, moving on to our second to last pick, I decided to get a grass type uh, that I felt fit the team, uh, and it was a suggestion once, once again from Johnny. We ended up getting Amoongus. Now, uh, Amoongus like, might look a little bit conflicting with uh, Tapu Koko due to the fact that it's, uh, it's grounded, it goes for Spore, and with Electric Terrain up, obviously I can't Spore anything, except for things that are off the ground. And things that are off the ground uh, are some of my biggest... Uh, problems, especially with Diggersby, for example, uh, that really likes to, to spam Earthquake. So, uh, Levitate Mons, like, for example, uh, Rotom and uh, the Lotties and whatnot, uh, really don't like uh, coming in on Spore, uh, even if Electric Terrain is up, because then they still go to sleep. Uh, and then there's uh, there's obviously other options that Amoogus presents. Uh, Salt Vest uh, is a really cool set. Uh, I'm, just, I'm kind of disappointed that Amoongus doesn't get Leech Seed, because I think that would make it infinitely better. 
uh, as a uh, as a grass type, but uh, that's okay. That's not a big deal. Um, access to, to clear smog is a very very big one. Uh, prevents setup uh, from a lot of bulky waters that uh, my team looks to struggle with. Uh, things like Suicune, for example, and whatnot, uh, which is of course on. Uh, the best player in the league's team, Gypsy. Uh, and uh, access to foul play once again. I have a lot of foul play mods. So that's going to be really interesting this season. Uh, we have uh, Sludge Bomb, obviously, things like that. Stomping Tantrum is something that it gets now. Uh, that's going to be interesting against the person who has Tapu Gulu. Hello, Cheese. Uh, so a lot of uh, a lot of cool options. It does get recovery, obviously, in Synthesis. Uh, like I said, I just wish that it had Leech Seed. I think that would make it infinitely better, uh, and I think it would still stay around 10 to 11 points. So uh, Amoongus just lacks in that department. But everywhere else, it's uh, it's a really really good Grass type. I think it's uh, it's excellent at what it does. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it for my second to last pick. And finally, uh, the way that our Z points work this season is that. Um, we had 24 Z points to spend on uh, the equivalent uh, point value of the Mon that we were putting the Z Crystal on. So obviously I was going to go with Coco uh, as one of my uh, Z Mons, 17 points. So I saved up the last 7 for another Steel type, and uh, I ended up getting Z Durant. And uh, this is my last pick, as you can see I have 0 points left. Uh, Durant is, uh, is an interesting Mon. It was banned from RU uh, as a result of its Z Home Clause set, uh, which is very, very terrifying. The speed tier is really nice. It's in, uh, it's in again, the mid-range for me. Uh, what I'm actually lacking the most is, like, a base 100 speed. Uh, that's what I don't have on this team. I don't have a base 100 speed, even though it's so, so common. Uh, I don't even have 105. I, I start off at 108, uh, and then jump to 115, and then, uh, up to 130, uh, I believe, with Tapu Koko, so... Uh, yeah, I'm kind of missing that, but Silvali has the 95, and I believe Meloetta has the 90, so, uh, Como the 85, so it's not too, too bad that I'm missing the, the 100, it doesn't, uh, doesn't shake me up that much, uh, but Z Durant is really, really threatening, Hustle with, uh, uh, with Z Iron Head, Z Hone Claws, Z Crunch, um, a lot of really, really good Z moves that this thing can run. Z Stone Edge, uh, Z Super Power. I uh, can even run Sub Swarm, for example. Sub uh, SD Swarm with uh, with Buggy and Z. If I figure out that I outspeed the entire team, essentially, uh, would uh, would be a very interesting set. Sub SD uh, Swarm with uh, even a well, then I wouldn't run Buggy, but a Salic Berry is always an option as well. Uh, so very uh, very cool mana, cool little breaker. Uh, if ever I want to bring it. Uh, I think as a Z-Mon, it poses a very big threat and people have to watch out for it in prep. Uh, now, as far as my full team goes, obviously there are some flaws. Uh, I think every team has flaws in some regard. Uh, I think even Gypsy's team has a few flaws. Uh, so there there are things to be noted, uh, especially that if the fact that I don't have a water type and I'm kind of forcing Silvali into the role. Uh, I'm looking into transactions already. Uh, not that I don't like my team, but I, I feel like I can make it a little bit better. Uh, and there are some Mons on the team. Namely, uh, I want to say Fortress uh, and maybe even Durant that I'd be willing to drop. Everything else is really, really solid. Like, really solid on this team. And you guys, uh, I, as weeks go on, I think you're going to start realizing just how potent this team is and how difficult it is to prep for. Because there are multiple setup options on this team that you have to prep prepare for. And then you have to prepare, prepare for the momentum and the breaking as well. So I'm really digging this team, honestly. I, I really like the feel of it uh, for some reason. It, if you asked me, do you want this team? Uh, do you want to take over this team in a league? Uh, if this was somebody else's, I would probably tell you no. Uh, because that's how little this looks like a team that I would draft. And ultimately, I really, really like it. So... Let's hope that it pans out. Let's hope that it's able to, to carry me through this season of the NPL Majors. Uh, obviously, with my run in the GBA recently, uh, it's not looking too good for me. Uh, I'm washed up, as all of you know. Uh, but no, no, no. I'm, uh, I'm actually going to try really, really hard this season in the NPL. Uh, I'm trying to get a title somewhere, and if it happens to be in the NPL, that would be amazing. Uh, it would be quite a story the way that I, uh, I started off uh, replacing Rob, had a chance to stay in the NPL. Uh, ended up having to work my way back up from the top, from the Miners uh, Entry Tournament to NPL Miners and now into Majors. And now I finally get a full draft in Majors for the very first time. So uh, this is going to be an exciting season. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we do play David tomorrow, as you guys know, as I mentioned earlier. So I'll uh, be looking out for that. And uh, that's going to wrap it up for this draft, guys. If you uh, if you did enjoy, make sure to 
leave a like down below. I'm going to leave a link to all the coaches in the description down below as well uh, for the NPL, so make sure to check them out. Go and see their draft analysis. Figure out who you want to root for. Uh, if not me, uh, then uh, then somebody else. Find a team that you like, and uh, I'm really excited uh, for this season. I hope you guys, you guys are too. That's going to wrap it up once again. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.